Hey guys, this is Abba with Coffee and Code. Today I'll be continuing our C Sharp learning series and having a look at functions. So to understand how to use functions, first we'll start with a very basic demo and we'll follow what we did from the first lesson. So we will do a console write, what is your name? And we can use string variable and say string name equals console.readline. Perfect. So what will happen now is this will be printed out to the console and the cursor will be sat here waiting for the user to enter something. Whatever they enter will be stored in string name and we can validate that by just printing name back to the console. And let's just run this for now. What is your name? Abba. And then Abba appears on the next line. Perfect. Now if you want to do exactly the same thing and print out what is your birth birthday month month and then we can print that out Abba May and we can see the values being stored are being printed out to the console point of functions is to repeat repetitiveness so we can see here we have a console write and a static string we have a string name and a read line and we have a console write line with a variable and they're exactly the same on both situations so these three lines at each section are identical except for the values that are inside them, the variable names, and the variables being printed out. So let's start with a very basic function first, and we can start from there. Outside the main function, we can create a new function called public static void read name and open curly braces. What's happening here is we're saying we want a public function so we can use it inside of the main function. We want it to be static because in the console applications, if the main entry point to the program is a static function, then we also need to make this function static. We'll go into the meaning of static further on in the tutorial. This is just for the function basis. Void means that we need to return nothing back from the function. So we just store something. Void means that when we execute this function, nothing gets returned back to where we call it. And then this read name is just the name of the function just like here, the name of the function. For now, we're not gonna include any parameters, just so we can try this out. So if we block comment out this section, and let's take one of these and copy them into here. So this is to read our name, perfect. But now if we run the program, nothing's gonna happen. And the reason for that is because we specified the function down here, but we haven't actually made use of it in the main entry point. So just after our comments, we could just call it Read name, open bracket, close bracket. This is how we call our function. We use the same name as displayed here, and then you open the brackets and close the brackets, and the reason why there's nothing in here is because we don't currently have any parameters. We will go into these soon. So if we run the program now, what is your name, Abba, Abba? And we can see that it's working properly now. Now what we could do is we could make a new function called public static void and call it read month. So we can make a new function called read month and we can take this code and put it into here, which is fine. And then we can use read month in here. What is your name? Abba, what is your birthday month? May. Perfect. So now we have two functions and we can get rid of these comments because now we're done with it. So now our program looks a lot more structured. Our main function, we just have very, very basic amounts of code. We're just telling the program we want to read the name, we want to read the month. Now, but the problem with this is functions are meant to reduce the repetitiveness, which means that now we have two functions that still contain similar content, but we haven't been able to do anything with them. So this is where we now include parameters. So what we can do now is get rid of the read month function and rename this to read value. So then what we can do now is rename these to read value. So the problem with this is these variables are still going to be static and they're not going to change regardless of how many times that we call it in the code up here. So what we need to do is we need to make these a bit more generic. So we can rename name to value and we can print the value. And the only thing that differs between the name and the month output from before was the string that we asked them. So we can remove that and we can say question. Now, of course, we're going to get a red underline to say that question does not exist. So this is where we start to use parameters. Parameters are values that you can pass into functions 
and then they can be processed inside. So we need a question to be inserted in the console.write. So we can put in the parentheses a string question. And this means that once we call the read value function, then we need to pass it a string variable that contains some text. And this text that we passed into the read value function will be placed into question. So now what we can do is in these function calls, we can open the speech box and say, what is your name? And in the next one, what is your birthday month? So now we have a function call to read value and it passes in a static string, which gets overridden here and then gets placed into here. Then we store the output from the console into a string value and then we print that value to the screen. So now let's try and run this program. What is your name? Abba. What is your birthday month? May. So now we have exactly the same output as before, but now we only have a significant less amount of lines of code. Perfect. So now that we've made this example, I think what's best is to use the code from the previous video and make it a lot more efficient. So I've copied the code in from the while loop video. If you haven't seen it, please press the banner above and have a look at it. But just a quick rundown, we're making two integer variables, loading in the first number, loading in the second number, multiplying them together to store the answer and asking the user what is the value of the two numbers that you previously entered multiplied we're using a while loop in this case, so we let the user answer as many times as they want until the answer is correct. So then we set to while loop set to true because it's incorrect at that point. And we, while it's incorrect, we ask them for the answer, read the input, do a comparison. And if they get the answer correct, we set the incorrect answer boolean variable to false. So the next time it loops around, it kicks out the while loop and jumps out to the console read line so the program can finish. If the answer is not correct, we print out a message saying close, but it was wrong. Then we loop back around to the while loop and ask them again what the answer is. So if we try and make this a little bit better using functions, we can see that we have the same similar blocks. One blocks here, one blocks here, and one blocks here, and they all do exactly the same thing. Console write, they store the string as an input, and then they use the string input to convert it to an integer 32, and then store it into the values. So let's start making that function. Public static int read int. Now the difference with this function, the reason why I've wrote int is because in all three of our situations, we are printing a string to the console, then we are reading it in as a string, and then the final line is to convert it to an integer because we are passing everything as integers and do an integer comparison. So all of our numbers need to be integers. So instead of returning nothing, which is what void means, we want to be returning int because once we're done with all of this, we need to store it inside an integer variable. So what we can do right now is we can give it a string question, just as we did in the previous example, and we can do console write question. So now that we've asked the question to the user, we can use the string call input console dot read line. And then once we've got the string representative of the console input, we can do a int number equals convert to int32, and we can place the input in here. So now we've got, we've print the question to the console, read the input as a string, and then convert it to an integer. Now we're still getting this red line in the function, and it says that not all the code paths return a value. That's because we've specified an int here. So then that means somewhere in this function, we need to have a return statement. All this return statement says is once we're done with our function, we need to give something back to the application. What we can say in here is we want to just return the number because once we've converted it to an integer, we need to send it back where we called the function. So then what we can do right now is we can replace these blocks of code and we can just say as a re replacement to this number a equals read int. And then our question is this. Perfect. And now that we don't really need the declaration up here, we can just do a declaration and an initialize at the same time. So we can also remove these lines of code. And then we can just place the int in front of here. And we can also do this with b as well. So we can say int number b equals read int 
and then we can place the question inside the parentheses. So now we avoided these lines and all of these lines and just kept it as two very, very simple function calls. Awesome. So now we can use this to print the question out to the console, still keep this true. And then this is our last bit of code that we need to change. So as before, as it's still the same values, int actual answer equals read int followed by our question, which will be in the parentheses. And we can call that here. So now if we run the program, everything should still look exactly the same. 10, 10, what's the value of 10 to multiplied? 10, 30, 50, 60, and finally 100. Well done, you got it correct. Awesome. So now what we can do is if you want to delete these lines of code, we can see how much more of a difference that our program's got to. Now it fits on just one singular screen. Before we had lots and lots of lines of code above just to do exactly the same values. So now that we've read in all the values in here and returned it, we can explore other things that we can do with functions. But I think that's it for today. See you in the next one.